Okay, folks, you've seen me paint a sky a million times. Well, I hope you have anyway. This is a commission piece of Selby Abbey. So what I've done already is I've taken the, the white canvas and painted on a normal sky. And a little bit of a tree line down there just for background material. Once that was dry, I penciled in a little sketch of Selby Abbey itself. Quite intricate detailing. There's a lot of stony effects in there as well, which we're going to get onto. Uh, once we've done that, we'll come back in and paint the uh, the landscape down in the foreground and push that abbey really back into the painting. Uh, I'm going to show you the palette now for the stones, but before I do, please like the video and subscribe if you haven't done so already. Happy days! So this is the stone palette, basically. What we're going to create the abbey with, we've got titanium white and ivory black there. And in between there, we've got loads of these rustic colours, which is uh, yellow ochre, cad yellow. We have got raw sienna and burnt sienna. And we've also got burnt umber. Now I've taken a little bit of each and mixed them into some white just to create a little bit of a colour that we'll be using for the stonework on the abbey there's no landscape colors on here just yet no greens blues reds and things like that yet i just want it to stick to these nice same colors okay so this is what we'll be using for the abbey I'm take a little bit of this color now and i'm going to just start to sketch in where some of this will live go over the pencil lines okay i'm going with the lightest color first and if it picks up a little bit of that pencil and makes it a little bit darker don't worry about it Okay, we can come back and readjust everything that we need to do. I'm not going to paint the whole thing in these colours. Oh, sorry, in this one colour. But I'm just going to get a bit of this brickwork in. I think we've got some steps, well, slates there. Uh, maybe a bit down there, like that. And just keep changing the flavour and the flow every now and again. And we've got to pick out some shadow work and some highlight work as well okay i'm going to put a little bit of the paler color on this now the great thing about using a small brush is that the color quickly comes off the brush you see then you don't have to keep washing it just just wipe it out and pick up another bit of a stony color we'll go down there and of course we will darken parts off as we see fit. so so the abbey is such a wonderful place i've never been actually into it but i've I've passed it on many, many occasions. It's such a, an historic, historic building. It's, it's not too far from York. It's, uh, it's full of history, full of history. So if you ever get a chance and you're in the area, get to Selby Abbey. It's beautiful, it really is. As you can see, we're just building up layers of colour. Uh, that's quite dark according to the this 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 window here is quite dark so i'm going to start off with a little bit of burnt umber and a touch of black mixed into that and whatever dirty whitey color that we've got on the brush just there i'm just going to block in some color underneath the main window here like that i'm going to change brushes this is a flat brush uh, but i'm going to change brushes in a moment i'm just going to get a few of this detail in there just little arches like so you don't have to be over perfect as well don't try and kill yourself trying to get every little bit of masonry right and uh, if there's a gargoyle in the wrong place don't don't stress about it just as long as the basics look correct remember this is your interpretation or my interpretation of uh, of the abbey okay there's definitely going to be foliage which isn't in the uh the photographs that I've got but um, we can use artistic license all the time don't we we've all got that color on we might as well just put a few bits and pieces here just to change the flavor up and keep it all tied in and down there if you tap on tap on tap on it gives you a little brick kind of effects yeah that's very subtle you can't really tell but it's there okay right let's change to a round brush so I've changed to a rounded brush and I'm just putting in some of the shadow work in these in this masonry element above the door and just below the main window. Uh, you don't have to be accurate to a scale. Well, I find you don't have to be. Just as long as they're all there and they look right, 
from a distance. Remember, this is your interpretation of the Abbey, or my interpretation of the Abbey. So it's going to look a little bit different, isn't it? Uh, it's a painting after all. If you want perfection, get a photograph. Uh, right, so again, there's going to be some foliage either side that's going to be completely different to the photographs that we've got anyway. So, yeah, artistic license does definitely play a major part. Right, well, we've got that dark colour on. I'm going to go start to go around the door frame. I'm just adding a few little different colours for rocks. Well, stones, whatever the, the minster was built out of. Here and there and there and here just to break up any large colours. I've also added a little bit of bluey grey colour. I know I didn't have blue on the palette, but I needed it for the, the glass windows. Okay, I haven't stained them with any colours or anything like that. I've just mottled it with, uh, you know, like a little bit of thinner and stuff like that. So, so there we go. I think we're about finished with all this tight work, which is pretty cool, really. I think we can now get on to some of the landscapes and the figures in the foreground. Just taking a little bit of pale grey colour, I'm going to really put in where I want some of the elements. So obviously we need a pattern, it needs to come wider as we come towards the foreground there. I'm going to have some steps about here, I think. So you're taking steps down onto the path. I'll not put the figures in yet because I want the figures to be scale to the obviously they've got to get through the door so but they want to be a little bit bigger than the door you know round about there and there you know married couple and all that lot okay uh and we want some trees so let's just touch a little bit of brown into that gray just, just i want a little tree about there okay and maybe uh we want something a little bit bigger see all this is backgroundy stuff now so a couple of trees here and there. Um, let's have a look about there. Maybe a little bit bigger one, and something similar on the other side. Um, maybe not as close together as that, but we might have just a nice one there. We might work on all this lot as well, and then obviously we want something about there like that. We don't want. I don't know. I don't want big bushy trees, but we might have something coming over and pushing it back that might go off the page off the page off the canvas there okay uh the grasses in the lands we might we need something here uh we'll, we'll need something round about here to push it back as well okay so i think next thing we can do is maybe put in some grasses i think what do you think some grasses okay let's get some grasses on now it needs to be paler down there and darker and more prominent up here. I'm gonna add some yellow first, okay? I'm just gonna gently go around the abbey. Really lots of thick paint. Just get that off wherever it needs to go. Maybe similar on the other side. Just really push it into the fabric. Go around the base of the abbey. We want to basically chop the abbey off. So the, this grass bank is in front of big church okay let's let's change the flavor of it did a bit of indian yellow to that there okay and just fill this in a bit of yellow ochre maybe doesn't have to be beautiful at this stage now let's get a bit of sap green sap green just throw that in throw that on all right really get mean with it maybe a bit of brown in there different colors i like creating lots of different colors and this is why you use an old old brush for this don't have to be exactly well that would be a bit of a bright green there um it doesn't have to be a a fan brush it can be any brush you want as long as it's old and it's natural bristle so you can really firmly push the paint around may even grab a bit of black you know do that why not bit of shadow bit of black get darker towards us yeah before i get carried away with the grass i basically had a stab at it at this side and i'll show you what i did on the opposite side i just want to put in a bit of color for the path now you've got to know that i'm using a little bit of artistic license here i am not 
painting an exact copy of of uh, the Abbey. That that would be not hard to do, but there'd be things in the way, like you know, like posts and trees and 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 all sorts of stuff that I don't want in the picture. And I also want the landscape to come in from either side, so it forces your eye to the focal point, which will be the Abbey mainly, but there'll be two folk in front of it. Okay. So, just pushing a little bit of this colour, your path may grow, always does, doesn't it? Your path will grow. Put it there, I want it darker obviously here, but uh, we'll just push it in. Again, this is a very stiff, firm filbert brush, one of my favourite brushes actually. You can paint a whole picture with, with this, maybe not this intricate, but definitely a normal landscape. Right, so that's all in, okay. Now, we haven't truly established where the light's coming from well we have really coming from this side so it's hitting there so we're going to have shadows there on the path now i think these are stones but we're just going to make it look like a decent path okay, okay i think there are paving slabs or something like that but we're just going to make it into a path now i've mixed up a little bit of red and blue and that gray color we've got going and i'm just going to Push in some shadow work down here. In fact, I don't want it going up. So I'll make it come down a little bit. Nice purpley shadow in the path. This will be the first shadow. We'll put a darker one as we go along. Maybe comes up there and a lot down there. Okay. So nice little shadowy thing going. I could paint the stones in and stuff, but... I think this might be better. It might distract your eye a little bit more if you had too much detail on the rest of the painting. So there we go. I have to get a little brush and sneak some stony stuff just down in front of the door. Okay, uh, wipe off any excess. Wipe off any excess. And then I'm just gonna tease this out. Tease, tease, tease. Keep it as flat as you can, or as flat as you want. If you want the path to be eroded away we could go like a u-shape but but i don't want it overly eroded away just tease it into the painting there we go now i can put another one on top of that so we can mix up a bit of a darker color so just pick up a darker color so it's the same colors i've just shaded it off with a bit of black and I'm just going to hit the base there. Now, if you don't know what I mean about shading and tinting, just watch this little video that comes up in the top corner. It only takes about 40 seconds. It gives you a bit of terminology what, what artists use. But, hey, I'm going to tell you something now. I am no professional artist. I have not had any art lesson at all. I've just picked up what I know by picking up a brush and practising and obviously watching a lot of YouTube. So... And I have problems with my hands as well and grip with my hands. So anyway, as of that, if I can do it, you definitely can. All right, so again, we'll just bit that darker colour, a lot of dark colour down here. Okay, we'll worry about the paving slabs in the foreground at some point. But again, wipe off any excess. Wipe off any excess, okay. And then just again, just tease the two colours together, the darkers and the lighters just like that blend it blend it blend it okay okay let's work on the highlights on the side of the path i've cleaned the brush out and i've just added a little bit of white and a touch of cad yellow no sorry yellow ochre into that and i'm just going to pull out some highlights in the path just very similar how we did the shadows okay just pull it out let it neat let it mix okay a little bit more down here on bigger strokes into the middle as we get closer to us yeah like so and if you pick up a bit of that green don't don't worry your head about it 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 will happen like so there we go okay and there i think that might do it for the path wipe out the excess again and again what we're going to do is just tease everything together now. We could go over this with a blender, but I'm, I'm a bit lazy. I can't, can't be bothered putting this brush down. It's my favourite brush. 
Okay, before we get carried away with anything else, let's just work on the grasses here. So clean fan brush or cleanish. Okay, it's an old one. All right, and I'm just gonna, I've got myself a cloth as well, a, a lint free tissue, and I'm just gonna push up small strokes at this side. Push up, go over the abbey. Okay, and then I'm just gonna tease all the colors together by pushing up. Now, they wanna be bigger strokes down at the base. Now, where it looks one flat color like that, just grab a bit of black or a bit of dark green or whatever, and just throw it in there and tease it. Okay, together, and think where the light's gonna zoom across and hit. Okay, as it gets down here, we'll put a little bit more pressure on it, a little bit more lifty up action. Okay, get too much paint on the brush, just wipe it. Okay, just keep going. Remember, I'm going that way, I should be going upwards. Remember, grasses grow up. Okay, there we go. That's your top tip for today. Grasses grow up. In fact, I think all plants do, don't they? In fact, that, that, that might be a bit bit of a lie, really. Some like tree trunks grow under. I don't know what I'm saying. The paint's thin. Is... <laughs> okay, just keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Just push up, push up, push up. And you may need to dip down into your palette and get a little bit more colour if you get a little bit of something that you don't like. Like this area here looks a little bit too flat for me so wipe the brush i'm just going to grab a bit of the the browns and blacks and just shove that in like that and just push up the, the roughness of the uh the brush will cut through the canvas where do we want this about there we're gonna have a tree we might have to have some shadows in here so maybe even grab a touch just a touch of the blues Create a bit of a shadow going there. Okay, there we go. Well, we've got that dirty colour in there. I might just try and break up some of this. There. If we get in there, we're building our painting. With a bit of thinned out paint, and I've gone through the colours so I've started with a dark green and a lighter green and a almost a yellowy green now I've got a very pale yellow just where the sun is catching up here I'm just putting in a few of these twinkly leaves okay and as you get less paint on the tip of the brush you could feather that back into the foliage like that wherever they want to be where the light's coming from that's where we'll put on go maybe right at the top there I picked up a bit of that yellow that was already on thin paint but a lot of paint as well globs of paint there, just dots dashes strokes there like that good i think it's about time we put the the married couple in the painting now the idea for this came from a painting I did for my brother that you may have saw a couple of months back, Hornington Manor. And they saw that picture and they wanted this, a similar one setting up for themselves. So, and that's how they contacted me. So we're gonna put the bride and the groom in here on the path. So if anything goes wrong, it can be blended into the path and not the church or the, or the foliage or anything like that. But I'm gonna start off with some thin white paint, just there. Now what the idea is, we may have to build up layers of paint to get through the grey. The grey may start showing through because it's a thin paint. Okay, now come down here. And we'll put a little bit of a train on this. Like so. Now what, what I'm going to do, is I'm going to periodically step back. Okay, and check to see if the proportions are right. And if not, we'll zip it off. I think I've got the proportions correct and I've just done a little bit of research and I th I think the bride wore an open back wedding dress. So just a little bit of light blue. Now this is a very thin paint so as soon as it comes off, so sorry, as soon as it's finished, it's going to lay flat because I don't want the wedding dress dripping all down here. But I'm going to touch here and there of pale blue will indicate some shadows 
you know, in the in the creases and the folds and the the do through dos that of a shirt. Okay, now I may make a hand come down and oop, may make a hand come down and hold the groom's hand. We'll have to see how how that goes, uh, and I will put a little bit of shadowy blue, not much, just on the path. Just there, and maybe a bit more, just up, up, up there, just just a little bit of something like that. Just set them down into the painting. Maybe that's a bit strong. If that's too strong, I'll have to come back and grey it off. Yeah. Right. So I put a little bit of shadow down there, but I don't want. Uh, don't want it overpowering kind of shadow. Now the groom has a a grey suit on, which should be a bit easier to paint, uh, because all males really are when when you're painting them from behind, or blokes, men, or people generally with trousers on. They're generally a wedge shape, like a carrot. Okay, so like a carrot top there. And the carrot comes down there. And maybe I keep it a bit lighter there, but you see what I mean. So they look like a kind of a, a carrot from distance. There, broaden, broaden the shoulders there. Like so. So we've got some grey paint down now. We'll put some black shoes on, a bit of, bit of shadow work, and a nice carrot top on there. Good stuff. Some more flowers and grasses just right down here in the foreground and we have got a nice finished painting. This is an epic painting, isn't it? And I really do hope my customers are, are happy with that. If you've liked this video, give it a bit of a thumbs up, subscribe if you've not done so already and leave me a nice comment. Let me know how well I've done. Until next time, take care of yourself, stay safe, happy days.